you're just not really that hungry when you're doing this. And I love that. I love that, you know, that was always my, my weak point was if I got hungry, man, I just wanted to jam whatever crap was around in my mouth. And it was always something junky. It was always Doritos or, or, you know, cookies or whatever. Rob, how did you find Carnivore? A pretty long story, actually. Um, back in the early 90s, I was into bodybuilding and uh, one of the radical cut, uh, fat cutting diets was what was called a cyclical ketogenic diet, which was you did keto for six days a week and then one day a week you did a carb load because uh, the conventional wisdom at the time was that you needed glycogen, you needed to refill your muscles with glycogen and everything, which uh, more of the what I've been reading lately or even in the last few years is that that's just not the case. They did studies with people that were pure keto and people that did their carb load and like negligible differences anyway it was a radical thing uh you know i was buying bodybuilding magazines that's how you know there was no internet back then <clears throat> so um just over the years i was always maintaining interest in nutrition because one of the tenets of bodybuilding is you can't outwork a bad diet right i also have a big huge sweet tooth and i love junk food and beer so <laughs> let's just say i've been fighting that battle a long time over the years you know but I always kept coming back to keto. You know, I'd go stray off the path, keto. Even when I was eating not great, I still was very protein heavy, very meat heavy, high fat just because I ate a lot of meat. Uh, but the problem was I was eating a lot of crap, like a lot of, you know, like Doritos and cakes and chocolate and crap like that, you know, and beer. So um, just back and forth like this, you know, doing the yo-yo thing, basically. I'd go up 20 pounds, go down 20 pounds, go up 20 pounds, go down. And anyway, so uh, I... Back in 18, I let myself get pretty, pretty heavy, like from close to the heaviest I've ever been. And I said, well, uh, this is, I feel like crap. So I'm going to, I know what I need to do. And I worked in intermittent fasting. I discovered intermittent fasting too. So I was able to drop 50 pounds in something like in the neighborhood of six months, six, seven months. And I wasn't super heavy. Like I'm 5'8", and I think I got up to about 230 at the time. And so I dropped down like in the 180, 180 range. So I wasn't like... Um, you know, there's some people that say, oh, I lost 100 pounds in, in, in five months, but they were 500 pounds to begin with. And that's not like a dig at anybody. It's just when you have a lot of weight to lose, it's easy to lose it, you know, the, the big the big numbers uh, up front, right? So um, anyway, so I maintained pretty good for a couple of years. And then I slowly but surely got back into my bad habits and uh, and put on weight and put on weight and put on weight. And um, I was in Los Angeles uh, in January for, uh, for a vacation. And uh, I went kind of nuts on the junk food like i ate three family-sized packs of oreo cookies to myself in the space of two weeks amongst many many other things and lots of alcohol and lots of uh you know so i've never been a huge soft drink drinker but i like jack and coke so that's that was my drink of choice and so you had a lot of coca-cola thanks to that uh when i got back i was like yeah I feel like crap again i gotta do something about this i had been hearing about carnivore never really knew what it was about i, I you know i thought uh i thought to myself well I'll try, I want to try this one. I, I looked into it a little bit deeper and I thought this actually makes more sense because one of the problems I had with doing regular keto was all the keto junk food, keto snacks that they make, you know, and because it, so I was always feeding the sweet tooth and it would make it easy to fall off the wagon. Per se. And also added in my mind that I, I need a cheat day every couple of weeks or week or weekend, you know, like you start off with a little thing and it becomes a big thing. So I decided, all right, got to drop some weight here and this was back in like i say the beginning of february when i got back and we are like we're june now so it's been, been about four months that i've been doing carnivore and the, fun, the the thing that really stuck out the most for me was um how easy it's been to not need or feel like i need cheat days i i don't crave the crap anymore and, I, and it came on real quick like that like i i dropped the you know had the usual flush out of fluid so the first five days i dropped like six seven pounds right there and then just, you know, thought to myself, okay, I got a goal in mind. And maybe after I get to the goal, I'll, uh, I'll allow myself to have a cheat here and there. Hit the first little goal, didn't need the cheat. So I was like, okay, I'm going to keep on going. And then now I'm in the, in the mindset of I want to stay strict until, because I've, I've, I'm down about 30 pounds now in, in the last, in, in about four months. And uh, the majority of it being body fat and everything. I mean, it's hilarious. I could fit into clothes I couldn't fit into because stuff I couldn't button up a couple of months ago. It's it's actually kind of loose on me now, which I always I always liked. But um, yeah, so I have like uh, like this. I want to get down at least to 180 before I'm about 188 right now, and I want to get down to 180 before I uh, sort of allow myself a cheat. 
so I've always, um, one of the things that was always a downfall for me was when I'd go out with friends and yes, you can always get, it's easy to get the meat, uh, for like, you know, stay keto. But my, again, my mindset was always different. Oh, I'm out partying. Yeah, I'm just going to have some beers and French fries and, you know, battered chicken and whatever, whatever. But the last, during this period here, I've gone out of numerous times for lunches and dinners and, and just get togethers with friends and stuff like that. And I've totally maintained the only thing which is technically not carnivore is that I would drink whiskey and club soda. So instead of having like a beer, I stick with the whiskey. I know it's not perfect, perfect, but it, it's the least of the devils, I guess, you know, if you're going to do it. And I'm just, I mean, I'm not going to give up everything in my life. I still drink coffee. I still put garlic on my steaks and stuff like that. Or sometimes not always, uh, you know, and uh, what's the other thing that I do that's not technically carnivore. No, I guess that's about it really. So, you know, like, one thing I, I, I don't try to allow myself doing is, is get dogmatic about things. Like I just have to, I tell people too, like when I'm telling them about this, uh, I don't preach at them. I just say, this is what I'm doing and this is what's working for me. And they're like, well, I couldn't do that. I'm like, well, you don't need to do that. Figure out what works for you. I mean, in the end, that's how it always has to be, you know? And so, uh, you know, but like I say, right now I've got a, a specific goal in mind. I'm staying very strict. This is the first time I've done four months without uh, having a piece of junk food and I can't even remember the last time to be honest with you that's kind of a miracle but I don't the best part is not craving it and of course as you know you're just not really that hungry when you're doing this and I love that I love that you know that was always my my weak point was if I got hungry man I just wanted to jam whatever crap was around in my mouth and it was always something junky it was always Doritos or or you know cookies or whatever but uh yeah so that's where I'm at now and uh I'm continuing to uh it, it's you know it starts off fast so i probably lost 20 pounds in the first two or three weeks and then it's tapered off i'm, I'm pretty good for about a pound ish a, a week right now um eating more calories if you uh, like i i keep track of my macros so i keep track of my calories not in the sense because i'm trying to limit them i just want to make sure i get enough protein every day basically so uh what i find is that my actual average calorie per day is way higher than it's ever been i think in my life to be honest with you. Now I do do intermittent fasting and I do a 36 once a week. So I'll not eat for a day, like a 24 hour period plus 12 on uh, six hours on either side, um, which probably, so I guess if you average it out over the week, maybe the calories are more or less in the same, in, in the same zone, but they're still higher and they're still not low enough from a calorie in calorie out point of view to, to be able to have that kind of fat loss. Like there's, there's way more meta metabolic stuff going on. That's not, has nothing to do with just me eating less food and, you know, it's, it's the type of food. So people say, yeah, I mean, I knew this even years and years and years ago that not all calories are created equal in the sense that some things your body's just going to put right to your gut and other things is going to use for energy and other things for rebuilding. You know, like I got a biker rally coming up uh, uh, later this week and I'm just trying to think in my brain, how am I going to keep carnivore while I'm at a biker rally? <laughs> well, I, I mean, at biker rally, what typically there'd be lots of, um kind of junk food and stuff the one good thing is that most biker rallies always lots of barbecue but they always put a ton of sauce on it so i'm gonna see if i can grab the barbecue like before the sauce uh but this it's really hard to find anything except beer to drink beer and water so i'm gonna i'm a partier i'm a partier so i have to uh i have to have find a happy medium i'm gonna see if i can swing some uh like just grab a bottle of hard liquor or the whiskey or something like that or, or if they have it at the, at the uh it's just like, you know, you get into, once you get into like sort of party mode, it's a little bit, it's like, I want to just go for it. So luckily all the other times that I've been out with friends and stuff like that, even if I've had a few drinks and gotten pretty wasted, I never didn't, I didn't, I used to be a bad get drunk, eat crap pattern, you know, like I'd get, you know, people get the munchies from smoking. I don't smoke. So when I would drink, I'd get the munchies. Now it doesn't happen anymore. I can, I can drink and I just don't feel like eating. Interesting. Yeah. Um. So, uh, just just to take a, a a bit of a step back, you mentioned intermittent fasting. Is there a reason you're doing the thirty six hours each week? I started it as uh, like for metabolic, for like the autophagy. I don't know how you pronounce that word. Probably you know the cell recycling though. And um, I just kind of like it. it. I like uh, having that day off of eating. It's I don't. I, I'm not really hungry. Like, you know, there's times, there's certain points in the time, usually later at night toward uh, bedtime, I'll start getting a little peckish. That's the other thing. Like, I never get, even if I do a 36-hour, I'm just not that hungry. Yeah, I'm hungry. 
but I'm not that hungry. I'm like starving or freaking out like I used to be when I would eat a lot of carbs and stuff, you know? So, uh, and, I, and I like doing the 18-6 daily just because it's an easy routine for me. So, I mean, I've never, never been a morning eater. So for me to start eating later in the day was never a problem. And I just, I say, well, I'm going to stop eating at six or seven at night or whatever. And then, you know, roll into the next day. So a lot of it's routine now. <laughs> yeah. In the four months, you've mm -hmm. lost, you've lost a significant amount of weight. Um, have you noticed anything else improve in regards to things like sleep or things like that? Yeah, actually I did. Um, I had a, weirdly enough, last year I developed really bad dandruff out of nowhere. All my life I've never had that at all. It just came on out of, I don't know what it was. It wasn't like in, I didn't notice it lining up with like a change in my diet or change in anything. It wasn't super, wasn't as, you know, more stress in my life or anything like that. Just, just started happening. So I was battling, you know, head and shoulders and knives are all and blah, 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 blah. And nothing's really working all that well. Within three or four days of going carnivore, uh, it was gone. <laughs> Completely gone. Yeah, it blew my mind, actually. I was expecting things like that, you know, but that was that was surprised me how quickly that came, how quickly that happened. And wow. That was the main one. Yeah. 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 Um, so you talked about how... Um when you tell people about this they'll be like well i couldn't do that and you know you you explain well you don't have to you've got to find your own way mm -hmm. but you know when you've been at these kind of uh, events w that you will be going to um when people uh when people see you kind of i don't want sauce that kind of thing i just want the meat you know i don't want the fries that kind of thing what is their reaction uh, it varies. Some people aren't phased by it. I think it's getting a little more popular now. So like I went to McDonald's as a, for instance, I, I was on my way to my buddy's place. I needed to grab some food. So I go to McDonald's and I said, just give me four plain quarter pounder burger patties and uh, some bacon. Didn't even bat an eye. No problem. <laughs> Rang it up and, and you know, like that. And I got other friends that go like, dude, you're going to put yourself in an early grave. I can't believe I'll, like, you know, I'll eat like a half a dozen eggs with cheese and fried in, in uh, butter you know and they go oh my god I'm, you, you, your heart's gonna explode and i'm like nah listen so one thing about i didn't i um one of the things that in the past my father passed away young at 45 from a massive heart attack you know and he had, he had no like he wasn't you know he wasn't super he was overweight but he wasn't you know he didn't you know he wasn't like a walking heart attack people that you see around you know and uh, so that was always in the back of my head so when i first really did keto uh i would go get blood work done and every time I was getting blood, my doctor would always be saying, like, uh, when I had it done when I was, like, 50, because I'm 55 almost. When I was uh, 50, I went to my doctor and I said, you know, do me up the blood work. I've been doing this. This is when I lost that 50 pounds. And he goes, he goes I never see guys your age with this kind of blood work. <laughs> he goes, you're good to go, man. Don't worry about it. Whatever, he said to me, whatever you're doing, keep on doing it. And, so I, and I told him what I was doing. He's like, oh, I'm not too firm, sure about that. But he goes, it's working for you, so keep on going, you know. So I'm... So I was cool about that because I, I got a doctor who's not a pill pusher doctor. So I, you know, like I've always been more interested in doing non-drug intervention remedies for things that happen. Like I've been lucky all my life. I haven't had really a lot of health. I haven't had really many, any health problems other than, you know, breaking an arm or, you know, the typical stuff, but not like uh, chronic diseases or anything. I do have hypothyroidism. So I take a pill every day. One thing I'm hoping is, is that uh, doing the carnivore, I'll eventually get past that too. So I haven't had, I haven't had my thyroid tested since I started again. I can tell how I feel that I'm much, I'm feeling much better. Like just the overall, that's one thing too, is like uh, jumping on the carnivore thing. My energy levels just went through the roof, like without even trying. So. I guess, well, that's a good sign for your thyroid yeah. as well, right? Yeah. No symptoms. I'm still taking the pill every day. Cause you know, you, you don't want to just do it arbitrarily. Uh, I remember one time when I had, I was out of town, this is years ago, mind you, and I'd forgotten to bring my pills with me. And in, in one week I put on like 10 pounds. <laughs> so yeah, it was pretty bad. So and at some point I'm giving, I'm going to wait till the six month mark. And then I'm going to go see my doctor, ask him to run a blood panel again and test all my thyroid, not just the TSH, but the T3 and the T4 and the circulating hormone levels as well. Cause I don't just the, the signaling hormones, not enough of a, of a good indicator in my, from what I've been more researching about you know so um day to day for for your you you mentioned you're a musician yeah 
Yeah. Not a full time musician. Yeah. I was I was in a band that was a full time well a touring band for about a decade uh, back in from oh four to fourteen. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, do you get what was the band? Uh, it was a Canadian band called Exciter, speed metal underground band, but in the metal world, a, a well known band. So we got to I got to live out my rock and roll uh, dream and tour the world. And I was in Japan actually. You're in Japan, right? We yeah. Played, uh, yeah, we played in Osaka for a couple of shows back in 2012, and I got to go to Kyoto and uh, and Tokyo. Pretty awesome. I love that country. I made a lot of good friends over there, actually. I keep in touch with today. How do you balance your time now between work and, and doing um, stuff with a band? Well, I'm not in the band anymore, so there's no balancing to do. I do a lot of karaoke. As you can see behind me here, my, that's my <laughs> one of my practice amps, the full Marshall stack. That sits, you know, I've got two of them there. So I do uh, karaoke with my uh, with my computer MP3s and playing music and stuff like that. I jam with friends every now and then and everything, but I was, uh, don't have a real a full band going right now. And for my real work, I'm an IT guy, so I do uh, you know I, I do work from home mainly. So which is really awesome. But I ride a lot, so in the summertime, which we're in right now, I'm usually on my bike. And what kind of IT stuff are you doing? Uh, like software development. I'm a consultant for the Canadian government. <laughs> ah okay how you said you've got increased energy so uh, are you able to kind of balance all those things better than before yeah i would say yeah i don't get overwhelmed very easily. i never really did anyway but i find it even now even better that's another thing to the mental the clarity and the, just being able to deal with shit happen oh, excuse, i don't know if i'm allowed to swear on this thing or not but deal, being able to deal with stuff happening you know like that comes at you out of nowhere and so, you know, like everybody, I have my challenges in life. And uh, when you're not, uh, when your emotions aren't, aren't like sort of going all over the place, it's really, it's a lot easier to deal with, a lot easier to focus and just deal with the problems and get them done rather than throw up your hands and scream or something, you know? So, yeah, that was another thing that I... Yeah, um, I, I, I've certainly felt the same. Like, it's almost like you're able to take a step back from you know being in the kind of the scrum or something and kind of go okay just calm down a little bit you know just deal with it step by step and you know yeah exactly hmm. yeah it's a it's a good it's it's a nice feeling i mean stuff still happens it piles up you got to deal with it just deal with it one step at a time you only can eat an elephant one bite at a time right so if you think about it like that then it's it makes things a lot easier to don't just look at everything. It's like, oh my god, it's a huge ball. No, no, it's just a bunch of. It's a huge ball made up of a bunch of little things. Just take off each little thing one at a time and get it done. You know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, how uh, how do you eat day to day now? Uh, actually, I, I have a pretty good routine. I'll usually start eating start my eating window at around uh, noon or so. And I either start off with like a half a dozen eggs. I like to fry them up in butter and put some cheese and just, you know, eat through them like that. I make these uh, really cool carnivore chicken tenders. I, I found a recipe for a keto version of it, and I just modified it a little bit to remove. So it's basically get the chicken pieces of chicken. There's a pork panko, which is the ground up pork rinds, a little bit of Parmesan cheese, throw in some salt and some garlic and, and an egg wash. And I batter it up like I do a triple batter fry it up in, in uh, saved uh, pork belly grease because I, I make these little pork belly snacks. I buy a whole pork belly, cube it up, and then fry it in its own. Oh, man, it's so good. So thinking about it now and making me hungry. <laughs> but uh, I, and I keep all the fat, you know, because I cook everything in it, either that or butter. And these things come out way better than any chicken tenders you're going to get at, uh, like, you know, at the, uh, at, the, at the bar and everything. And much better for you, too. Like, I mean, I look at it. Everything's contributing to the goodness of my diet in this, you know. And then, of course, like every like all good carnivores, I have a healthy pile of ribeye steaks on the go all the time. I buy complete whole ribeyes, and then I just cut them into my own my own steaks. I had last night my I had a probably the biggest one I've ever cut, which was like eight hundred and sixty grams. It's like almost two pounds. It was awesome, and it's boneless. It's just oh man, I sous vide them. It's like another thing too. I've, I've become a little bit of a chef. I, I was looking around and I saw oh, what's this sous vide thing? Oh, that's interesting. So I bought a, a little sous vide and the, the thing, and I cook them. I, I, pre I was always doing reverse searing for my steaks anyways, but I cook them in the oven until about 300, and then, or uh, not 300, <laughs> thank God, until about one, uh, 130, 120 or something, like that, and then finish them on the barbecue. So I bought a sous vide, 
And then I bought a thing called a grill gun. It looks like a gun and it shoots this this flame that's about probably, I don't know, about a foot. And it's like 3,000 degrees. And I just sear the steak with the, uh, with the gun at the end of it. It makes a perfect, perfect steak every time. And I do my burgers in it now. And uh, I tried doing a meatloaf in it. Don't recommend that. Didn't work out. <laughs> wow that that sounds also awesome. like yeah. <laughs> i just i i just like the idea of using that gun just oh it's awesome a, yeah and they, they made it they the made it in the shape of like a handgun yeah sorry to mean to interrupt you there <laughs> <laughs> no no worries um so that's a, so like how when you sous vide the beef how how does that come out is that like it's pretty rare well, it depends. You can put it like it depends on the on the. So I did a little experimenting because normally I like a medium rare. So I was, you know, I would the first time I did it, uh, I did like uh, two hours at 129 Fahrenheit, which would be the internal temperature of. Uh, and it came out it came out good. And then I was watching some more videos, and they, they, uh, one of the guys, this dude who's like cooks st like steaks is his thing, right? And I mean, his videos are amazing. This guy named Guga. And uh, he's a Brazilian dude. Anyway, he knows his steaks. And he was he's he has a sous vide channel, oddly enough. So I was watching some of that and he said, So for the steaks and the sous vide, you make the temperature a little higher, so one thirty five, because it renders the internal fat better. And yeah, it, it makes all the difference. So it looks a little more medium than rare, but it's got the texture and the taste and the the juiciness of a medium rare. And it comes out, like I say, perfect. Every, you take it out of the bag, it looks like a like like boiled meat. So it doesn't look all that great. You throw it on the grill, fire the gun on it there, and it takes about two or three minutes. You get a nice crust on the outside, and it's like a edge to edge perfect uh, cook throughout the entire steak. Like there's no spots that are more rare. You know, sometimes the steak's not perfectly cut straight. You know, you do it the old fashioned way, and you're going to get spots that are a little more cooked than others. This cooks the steak perfectly, and then you just finish it off with the sear. Nice. It works and perfect for burgers too. How how good is it to be eating in a way that you can have this awesome food and as much as you want and not feel guilty at any time? Oh, it's great. Uh, that was one of the things I always loved about keto because I'd laugh, I'd make the joke, you know, I said I lost 50 pounds eating 3 pounds of bacon a week and burgers and steaks and all this and my people people look at me like you're nuts. I'm like, "No, but it works. It works. Like it's just it works. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. You know, hey, listen, if I drop dead tomorrow, c'est la vie. I've had a great life up till now. I don't want to die or anything like that. But man, no regrets. You know, I, I, I'm always been about quality over quantity. I don't want to live to be a hundred if I'm going to be sick in in a bed all the time. Don't want to die at forty at fifty five either. But you know what I mean. Like, I'd rather live fast, die young, <laughs> for lack of a better term. But you know what I mean. Taking care of myself. Yeah. I, I, you know, I don't want to be yeah. silly. I mean, I think, yeah, if if most people had the choice, they don't want to be, you know, they want to have the quality of life. They don't yeah. want to, they don't want to be on, you know, the, the machines and the, and the drugs and whatever until the very end when they I mean, there's no quality of life there, right? Well, that's it. I have, I have numerous pacts with friends <laughs> about stuff like that. There will be no uh, machines keeping me alive for any length of time. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned like you've got this goal of 180 pounds. Yeah. Once you get to 180 pounds, um, what's the plan? Is the plan to keep going with carnivore or is the plan to moderate? Oh, yeah. Well, carnivore, I think, is going to be the base going forward, period. Uh, you know, like um, I just don't feel the need to do anything else. If down the road, when, when, when I say I have a goal of 180, that's like my short term goal. Like in my mind, when I started this, I was like, well, at some point I'm going to want to have, you know, chocolate or whatever or junk food, right? That hasn't happened yet. So if I hit 180 or when I hit 180, if I'm still in that mindset, I'll just continue as I am now. I'm just not going to like, uh, like right now I'm actively not drinking beer for it. I love beer. That's the one thing I do miss on this is beer. So when I hit 180, maybe I'll have some beer, you know, like that kind of thing. But other than that, I mean, uh, yeah, it, it was my it was my initial thought process uh, having based on like my experience with doing keto before where I would always have my cheat days and this and that. I said, well, I'm not going to have a cheat day till I get to 180, but things keep going the way they're going to go. I don't see it. I won't have a need to have a cheat day when I hit 180. And then I want to, I'm going to see where I'm at, like my body composition wise and everything. The one thing I have not been able to get 
uh, time to do is to get any kind of exercise. So all this weight and everything I've lost has been with zero seconds of exercise. It's just been purely diet change. So I don't feel like I'm losing muscle mass. I don't feel it. Like, I mean, you know, I'm pretty in tune with my body from all the years of, of weight training and stuff like that. I do want to get back to it. It's just a matter of organizing my time for that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of selling points in this way of eating, you know, like yep. eat good food, lose weight without doing any exercise. It's, you know. yeah, you almost feel guilty for that one, <laughs> but not really. <laughs> I'm lazy, you know, if I don't have to move, that'd be nice. It's, if it just melts off. Yeah. Mm. What, what's really cool about this time, and which is a little different from any of the other times I've done the keto thing, is it's, uh, I haven't hit any plateaus. Like uh, the weight loss slowed down, which I expected. But I usually would go the way, but again, I think this had more to do with, you know, incorporating cheat days and things like that, that, that sort of put the brakes on the progress. Um, you know, like, cause I normally go a few weeks and then I would stop for a few weeks and then, you know, start losing again. This has been pretty just, it's been a curve like, like, like this, for lack, you know what I mean? Like kind of an exponential curve, but it's continually on a downward trend. Like it's not, I didn't have any flat spots in it. So I, that's pretty nice. So one one thing I didn't ask you was um, when you you went from keto to carnivore those four months ago, how had you? What was there a, any particular person that you'd seen on a video or heard talking about carnivore that convinced you? Yes, actually, that is yeah. Thanks for reminding me of that. Um, the thing that really that, that made me go instead of just jumping back to keto and IF to try the carnivore was uh, there's that guy I'm sure you probably know him, Kent Carnivore, the guy with the ileostomy. So he was talking about uh, he was I think he was doing an interview with Sean Baker and he was talking about um, what he saw in his bag, which is kind of nasty. But he said he goes, you know, when I see when I would eat vegetables, I would see the vegetables in the bag. When I eat meat, it was just you know liquid. And I thought, hmm, yeah, you know that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because your body doesn't digest. And of course, the more I was researching you know, like the, you know, uh, low carb vegetables and things or, or low glycemic vegetables. And like, I mean, the one vegetable I do like is broccoli, oddly enough. And it's the more I look into it, the more I find out how really not good for you it is to eat it, you know? So, um, so I thought, you know, I'm going to give this a try. And, and I really, really love the simplicity of this too. There's no counting fiber carbs and this and that and everything. I just, ah, I eat meat, you know, yeah, there's a one gram of carbs in an egg, maybe, but I don't really consider that it's it's coming from the egg. So you know, like I know my, and I mean, I uh, I have a keto uh, keto mojo meter, so I can check my glucose and my ketones and stuff like that, and my GKI, and it's always down there. My one thing, oh, another thing I, I didn't uh, I forgot about. I noticed my resting heart rate. So it used to always be in the 80s and 90s. It's down in the 60s and low 70s now on a regular basis, which is pretty cool and. I don't know if that's, I guess that's probably from uh, getting rid of all the fluid and stuff like that. Oh, nice. Yeah. So one of your friends comes to you, says, look, I want to get started with this. You're doing really well. You've lost some weight. You've got lots of energy. How can I get started? Well, I always tell them I jumped in both feet and I had a bit of the disaster pants result from that because <laughs> I went from, I went from really had let, having, had let myself go pretty bad with my diet for I'd have to say almost close to a year at that point and with that ending time in LA that was just sort of the cap on the <laughs> the kind of crazy cap on the junk food uh, extravaganza that I'd been living up to that point and uh, when I got back I jumped right in full blast just straight to keto uh, straight to carnivore and uh, you know my body took its time to it to, to adapt and everything so I guess one of the things I would say is if you can sort of like if depending on what your diet is to begin with I mean if it's the typical sad diet if it's really terrible try to probably it's easier i always tell them if you do nothing else just get rid of the sugar and get rid of the seed oils as much as possible and then work your way down or into carnivore from there uh get rid of you know the starches and i mean i know people that are just like i can't go a day without eating bread all right well you got to get over that i mean if you want to do it you got to do it and ultimately i tell them if you if you want to do it you're going to do it and the you know there's ways you know you uh definitely you know go online and look up people like you and and other people who, who are doing this i've learned a lot from you guys you know and then i just incorporated into my own i've also uh, you know cut down on i used to take a eight mitfuls of vitamin supplement pills a day and i've 
cutting those out slowly but surely. So basically stopping them. Do I feel any different? No, didn't need it then, I guess, you know. I'm trying to get all my uh, nutrients from my diet. So, Rob, do you uh, do you have any social media, a website or anything like that if people want to reach out? Uh, I'm on Facebook, but other than that, I've really, I actually, for my mental health, I dropped pretty much all the social media stuff uh, just because it was, especially when the, the pandemic was going on, it just got crazy sauce, man. It was just uh, not good for me. So, yeah. So, I mean, I'm not out there really. Uh, people, if they want to look up the band or anything like that, the band is still active uh, without me in it. Uh, it's called Exciter from Canada, speed metal band. Um, you can look up, uh, you can find lots of videos and video and, and pictures and stuff of me too. My my nom de plume, my stage name was Clammy, C L A M M Y. <laughs> so if you look that up on Google, you'll still you'll still find stuff with me. Well, Rob, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story. I really appreciate your time. No, oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. It's nice to be able to talk it out.